Hello again, everyone. So welcome to part four, I think it is now. I'm losing count. Um, we had a slight interlude um, when I finished doing the last section. Um, Martin came up and bought this lovely beast uh, to put alongside the um, FT101, sorry, FTDX101. This is the 101ZD. Uh, um, it's the second um, generation following on from the original FT101 series um, and he, he wanted me to point out to you that uh, I mentioned in my last little clip that um, the RF gain control has the uh, slight uh, pronounced lever if you like that's what I said that follows on from the one the original 101 they don't have them on this version uh, but interestingly enough um, one thing that um, so let's say following on from that was that this particular lever was a bit of a surprise to us, but what was also another surprise is that originally, on our original sample that we had several months ago, um, the, the main volume was here, and the sub-volume was down here. And we had some comments from customers that they were worried about when they're changing the volume on here, they may knock the main VFO. Um, so Martin contacted the factory directly and suggested based on customers feedback that these two should be swapped over and lo and behold before production they actually did that uh, they do actually yes are very good they do listen to their customers needs so it's uh, very worthwhile so um, sorry about that little interlude there i'm just going to reset the cameras back to sort of showing you the the main screen and the main display over there um, what we've got back here, I've got the camera now panned specifically on the main display and you can see that on the main, uh, potentially the main um, display as well that we have in the back. So I'm just going to go over some of the stuff on here. Um, as you know, it's, um, it's a touch screen um, and there's a lot of things that you can do with it. So let's start with the, the standard um, display. You get this three, three dimensional effect, waterfall effect. And it was one of the things that I think, I'm not sure if I mentioned, um, I wasn't too keen on it to begin with. Uh, but having now used it for quite a few hours, um, I'm actually, I've actually grown to love it. Um, and if you go to a normal mode, as I think I said, if you go to normal mode, you get the standard. There seems to be something lacking. So I tend to use the, the 3D mode quite a bit of the time. So anyway, let's have a quick look and see what we've got on here. So at the top of the display, you've got it set such that the main is on the left. The, so the main, you've got signal strength on the left. Um, that's the received audio bandwidth, uh, received audio, I should say. The frequency display, uh, we've got memory tuned, so we should be into VFO. Oops, wrong one. So let's go back over to main and go to VFOs. What's going on here? VFO, VFO, lovely, brilliant. <laughs> Get it right, Steve. Okay, so both modes, uh, USB and lower uh, upper sideband. So go back over to sub and go to upper sideband. Yoo-hoo, got it right. Go back over to main, easy. Right, so what we're going to do. Um, as far as the top of the display, so both are indicating receive signal strength. Um, the left-hand one by default does the power. Um, the right-hand one on the sub receiver does the ALC. You can change them to a degree. So if you want to, say, change touch the display we've currently the left meter oops come back we can do compression touch the meter oops come back we can do the temperature pa temperature okay that's when you when you're transmitting okay um, so we leave that set to power on the right you can do the same thing um, do the same thing the right meter is currently alc you can have you missed it's a bit quick that uh, SWR so now when we key up we can see that the how good our SWR is to so say there is a tuner in here just press and hold the tune button Right, so below um, the two meters, uh, so we're both on VF, indicating VFO, um, USB, we've got the frequency display. Uh, at the moment they're slightly different frequencies. Below that, for each band, you've got five other options. You can, as I said earlier, you have antenna one, antenna two, uh, antenna three. Nothing, that's the receive antenna. Oops, miss, go back to antenna one. We got some noise there, that's good. Uh, next button along is for the attenuator. We can do that. We've got 6 dBs, 12 dBs, or 18 dBs. Oops. Go away. Uh, 
6 dBs, 12 dBs, 18, all gone. And then um, if you want, the next one is your preamp or IPO. Okay, so you can do that. We put IPO if you're on the lower frequency bands. Must remember not to be so fast. So you can see the signal, the noise level drop right off. Usually I use those on 80 meters and 40 meters, not so much on 20 meters. Um, and then you've got amp two if you want that. So now we've got a nice, lots of lots and lots of noise coming on there, as you can see. There we go. Right. Uh, next one is the roofing filter, currently set to three kilohertz. We have the options of six, 600 hertz, or 12 kilohertz. Um, and then you've got the AGC. Uh, you can have it off. Oh, nasty. Auto is probably best. Okay. Uh, you can have it fast and, and so on. So let's leave that on auto. And that's exactly the same as over there. So that's, that's what you get. Along the bottom, at the moment, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, icons, pieces of information if you want. Um, the left hand one is the type of mode, the frequency. So at the moment, we've got it in center mode. So our center frequency, 14.10783 meg, megahertz, you can just about see that down there. That's the center frequency. If I change that, you'll see it changing as well. You, hopefully you can, it's, bit, it's actually very, very small, so I doubt you can. Um, we've got the bandwidth, we've got plus and minus uh, about 250 kilohertz. Okay, you can set all that up in, in the span. If you press the center again, um, we are now in cursor mode. Okay, and if I tune, you can see th the cursor moves around like the old style tuners. Okay. And again, now you've got a fixed, fixed span from 13.857 to about 14.357. So that's pretty much the whole of the 20 meter band. If you touch it again, you go into fixed mode, which is um, sim very similar to the icon one actually, where here it goes from 14 megs dead up to 14.5 megs dead. And again, you can, that's a fixed um, spectrum. Uh, do it again and you go back into center mode. Right. Um, while we're in center mode, the next button along is the span. And you can say we're currently at 500 kilohertz. That's plus and, plus and minus 250 kilohertz. That's the total span is 500. We can go wider. Now it's uh, plus and minus five. Uh, 500 hertz or we can go right down to 20 and see what happens there we might have to turn our level up to get some signals there we go now we can get some signals now we're saying we've got uh, from our center frequency we have up to I think it's about six kilohertz wide so fun fun stuff to, uh, to play about with um, I've already mentioned the 3d SS spec 3d spectrum scope that's what we're on at the moment um, we do that, we get the standard waterfall, we're expanded mode, I can turn that off and you get the little waterfall down the bottom there. That's the traditional style. Okay, and then what else can we do? We've got mono, what does that do for us? Oh, we don't want to worry about the sub-receiver, forget about it. Let's just worry about the main receiver, okay? We can turn it off, we're still receiving stuff, but I'll turn it off now, don't want it, not interested. So just only on one receiver. So we're on mono, that's, that's all that does. Um, you can have, if we have the sub receiver on, we can go into multi mode. That does a multi function display. So we've got the main audio oscilloscope here, the FFT main display here, and the spectrum scope across the top. We can expand that up to make it a little bit bigger for you. So you can see, you should be able to see it a little bit better on the, the, the main display up there. Okay, and then um, if you want to stop any of that, you can press hold at any time to have a look at anything. So that's good. Right. So we're flashing to say we're, we're held at the moment. Okay, let it go again. Right, so I'm going to go back into um, a single mode or a single display. But what I'm going to do now, there's a display button here, which will actually set it up so you can have both receivers there. At the moment, by default, um, yeah, sub is on top, main is on the bottom. It's the same way as everything else. Uh, sub on the top, main on the bottom, uh, sub on the top, main on the bottom, and so on. Right, 
Um, you can, if you press it again, what you can do is get it side by side if you wanted to, if you don't want it top and bottom. Okay, and you can make them smaller or bigger, however you want. I think that's pretty much all I needed to show you on here. I've already been over to the uh, the scope menu. Um, you can change the uh, speed. Um, again, every time you select something, it now becomes operational by the multi button here. So I can I can go very fast. Now that fast is not affecting the sweep speed. It's actually how fast the um, display is going backwards, if you like. I can turn it right down to slow, so it's dunk, 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 and slow on, as opposed to dunk, 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 dunk. dunk. Right, so we have the peak. We can just hold the peaks if you want to change the peak level. If I turn the peaks right down, we get everything. Uh, what have we got here? So is that the main? So if we go over to main and we go into 3DSS, let's let's play about with this. I'm, what I'm going to do is put it back into mono mode for for now. Let's get rid of the other display. There we go. So we're on main. This is it. So now what goes is the peaks. So you can set the the peak level if you want of how what is held at the top. You can just see all the peaks sort of shining through there. If I turn that right off, you don't get anything held at all. Um, what else have we got? Colour. Oh, lovely. You want some nice colours? Here we go. We can have the colour on the narrow band. And uh, so that's pretty. Or we can go to that as well. Now it's all whew, flaming red. How about that? Flaming orange, I should say. Let's go back to that. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay, and then finally, um, the level is the normal default one, which is what we had before it's set at uh, 5 dBs. Okay, right. So I think that's pretty much all I... Um, what was I going to do? So if I sync those two up. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's all I wanted to show you on the, the display. I'm going to have another, another little pause just for a second or so, um, and then I'm going to go into the actual main uh, function menu. So bear with me for a minute. I'll be back shortly. Hello again. Right, uh, so uh, I'm finally back after a little extended break. Sorry about that. Um, Basically, I just need to go over some of the menu features and show you how to access the menu on here. So hopefully um, that will uh, sort of explain a few things to you. What I've got it doing at the moment, I've got obviously the main on seven, um, seven megs and I've actually managed to find a CW station. So that might help me uh, explain uh, some of the, the, the features uh, and functions within the menu system. So to access the menu system, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you just press the function key and I'm just gonna turn that down so I don't deafen myself. And you get s basically one, two, three, four rows of various menu options. Um, and the top row is the speed, the peak, the marker, color, and level. They all relate to the scope menu, exactly the same as before. If I just press the scope menu, there you go, speed, peak, marker, color, and so on. But if you press that way, they, they stay there, which is good. Um, so what have we got on the next one? So again, if I want to press the speed, that we can do that, the multi-channel knob, multi knob now is on speed. By default, it's on fast one. So go back to function. Uh, same with all the other ones, so I don't need to show you those. Uh, change the RF power. Um, you can just touch the RF power. The multi is now uh, set to RF power and you can change that from 100 watts all the way down to what does it go down to oh five watts there you go so keep that at five watts You've got that monitor level that's if you're using um, the monitor function on here so you can hear your own audio uh, coming back it's all fairly straightforward this uh, dynamic noise reduction level noise blanker level vox gain vox delay anti-vox step dial that's when you're you're tuning um, you can set up was it memory channels. That's how you would go through if we had set up more than one memory channel that I showed you earlier on. You can now change that. If we go to, let's have a look at VFO memory. So we do that. 
Oh, it has, it's got them there. So by default, it's got the five meg men memory channels, as you can see there. So 504, 505, 506, and so on. Um, and it goes back to our normal seven megs of uh, where we were before in memory 01. So let's come back out of the memory mode. So that's what that does. That was easy. Um, we've got group. Um, you can set up various groups. Um, memory groups and things like that. This is all to do with the memory functions. I'm not going to go into that detail here. It's something that you, you really need to go through the menu. Uh, me yes, the um, sorry, the manual, not the menu. You need to go through that to find out how these things work. Um, it does say, as I said right at the beginning, you know, it's worth with a machine as wonderful as this. It's got a lot of features, functionality. It takes some time going through the the, the manual. Right, so what else have we got there? Uh, roofing filters currently set to 600 hertz because we're in CW mode. You can do scan, um, various frequencies, you know, automatic scan. I don't want to do that. Okay, we're just about here, the CW station there. So if we go here, next to scan was decode. If you're in CW mode, you hit the decode button, you should start. If you're lucky, um, you will actually start seeing the CW decoded for you. Um, but it's a fairly noisy signal, it's a little bit on the low side. You need fairly strong, in my experience, you need fairly strong signals to be for the, regardless of the radio, you need to have a, a, a good strong signal before the CW decoder will start working. So if you were in um, RITI, you would get the RITI decode screen come up there as well. So, so. You, got, you can do repeater, so we're currently in simplex mode. You've got mic, e mic equalization. Uh, you've got encoding and decoding off if you want to send CTCSS tones um, for, you know, when you're on ten, uh, 10 meters, 30 megs. Um, tone frequency, um, you know, CTCSS tones. If you press and hold a, a function, you should get. Oh, it doesn't come up. I'm oh, surprised. Oh, interesting. Okay. Maybe because I'm not in FM. That's probably why. Let's have a quick go. This is an experiment. I'm just trying trying this now. If I press and hold that and we go to FM, that's going to be fun. Go to the menu function. Let's have tone frequency. Ah, there we go. Oh, then we've got memory groups now as well. Ah, okay. Wow. So how do we change that? I wonder. I don't know. There we go. Oh, I just wasn't fast enough. Yeah, some of these menus disappear quite quickly. And um, was it 107.8, I think. 107.2 is normal one. So, yeah, that's how you change that. So, that's good. But you have to be in the right mode for that to work, obviously. Sorry, I did that on the fly there, so I do apologise for that. Um, right, so if we go back into SSB mode, uh, sorry, CW mode. Oh, so, so function. Um, you can do record and playback and quick mink. Uh, can we do that? Yeah, so you've got where you can actually do your CW message memory. Um, you can record it and uh, for contesting, things like that. So that's quite good. Um, and then what else have we got? Uh, quick memory bank list. Nothing in there whatsoever at the moment. So we go back again. Um, and then we've got radio settings. These, these yellow ones here are the ones which have basically have the sub menu options in them. So radio settings, we've got uh, for SSB mode, AM mode, FM mode, packet, uh, RITI, PSK, encode, all sorts of things like that. And you can scroll down to get, there's a whole, there's just far too many to go through here. It's sort of the ones that you don't have to change that often. Okay, so you, depending on what you're doing, you go in there, get it working, Adjust, make the adjustments as, as you uh, would normally do, then forget about it, come out of there, and that's it. So we come back. So CW settings as we're in CW mode, you can set the keyer up, different types of keyers, DOS, CW weight, number style, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can set up. And say so these things change depending on what mode you're in, and say so CDs. So we've got CW decode bandwidth, what do we do for that? Oh, okay, we can go a bit narrower, go 50 hertz. 
see what that does. I doubt if it'll do anything, to be honest. Let's go. Let's let's try it. Should we just just for for a laugh? Uh, where are we? Decode, decode, decode. Uh, come on, where are you? Oh, there you go. Oh, uh, it's doing a little bit better than it did before, but still not 100%. But hey ho. So what else we got? Um, CW settings, operation settings. That's here. So we've got general. Good grief, there's so much stuff on here. Beep levels, you can uh, change the RF squelch um, knobs on here, which way you around you want them to do them. How to set, set up the tuner, RS232, bode rate for that, cat rate. Good grief, there is there is a lot and lot of stuff on there. It's There's no point in me going through every single option on here because you'd be bored. I mean, you're probably bored already, but um, Anyway, so, but it's, I would say it's a, because it's a fairly, um, I wouldn't say complex radio, this, it's a radio that's full, fully featured. There's a lot of features on there. It's, I'm going to say it again, read the manual. There's a lot of stuff, play with the radio and see what things are available. Um, it, it's fa the good thing is it's fairly simple to use, fairly straightforward to use. I won't say simple to use, fairly straightforward. Once you get to know how all the buttons work, how it relates to the main and sub VFOs and things like that, and how to get to the menu system, it's fairly straightforward. But all the menu systems are, um, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of them. Um, you know, simple things like the display setting. You've got the display up there. You can put your own call sign in, LED dimmers, things like that. External monitor if you want to do that. We had that before, showed you how to do that. Receive bandwidth for the scope. Let's try setting that to mid. Uh, 2D display sensitivity is um, high. 3D spectrum scope display sensitivity is high. So I'd say it's uh, let's go back to uh, decode off, I think it is. There we go. So so that's that's sort of a, that last little bit I felt was a little bit rushed, but I, I, I don't know what else to do as far as that's concerned because it was really, there's a lot of stuff in there. And I didn't want to say, I don't want to bore you. I just want to sort of point out, look, it's a brilliant rig, really good rig, but it's going to take some time to learn. And um, as I say, I've only had what? four hours before this and I've been work doing this uh, for a couple more hours now and I'm still learning stuff so but um, anyway I hope you hope you like the video um, we are as I said we are going to try and do a live stream it'll probably be towards the end of the day because the bands have been pretty dead they've only just started coming alive and say this is only a simple little wire antenna so if we put it on a decent antenna tomorrow um, we we'll see what we can do we've got some microphones we can play see how many stations we can work and start playing about with some more of the functionality within the menu system so with that i'm going to say good night or goodbye good afternoon whatever it is wherever you are um, say any comments at any time um, just let us know and uh, we'll see what we can do all right thank you very much for watching and appreciate it so uh, with that it's good night from me and it's good night from him and him and him so uh, there you go. Oh, isn't it quiet?